Ladies and gentlemen, my name is Paul, and in this Game to Come video, we're going to be discussing a slew of news which has appeared on the internet over the past 24 hours, pertaining, as always, to the technology industry. So some of this is going to be gaming orientated, some of it is going to be for high-end enthusiasts, but all of it is going to be rather interesting. We're going to be starting things out with AMD and a series of trademarks which have appeared on the internet, including Kaizen Aragon and Coramp, we'll get into that in a moment, lots of details on Intel's i9-7900K thanks to Sysoft Sandra, and then we're going to discuss a few other miscellaneous bits of information such as NVMe 1.3 specifications and also Thunderbolt. But first things first, AMD in Kaizen, Aragon, Pharos, Promethean, and well, Coramp. Yeah, you, you got all these really cool sounding Greek mythology terms and then you go to like, you know, Coramp. So, what are they? Unfortunately, we don't know. If you head over to uh, trademarks.justia.com and then check up under AMD's Advanced Micro Devices, you can certainly see a whole bunch of different trademarks that the company have filed in the past. Typically, these trademarks are filed uh, if, for example, we were to look at Ryzen or Threadripper and that type of stuff. It's generally filed, you know, not super far um, back in time before the product is released. So, you know, you're not looking at one, two, three years, um, you know, to go before these products are revealed. What are they remains a mystery. We could be looking at anything from the uh, internal code names of the X399 chipset. We could be looking at perhaps future Ryzen CPUs. We could be looking at, in the case of Coram, maybe it's something overclocking related. So perhaps it could be for the RX Vega. After all, Rajar Kadori did tell us that the Vega um, for the consumer, for gamers, is going to have some additional features. And I did speculate that those could be something more aggressive overclocking related. So perhaps it's going to be much more like, I don't know, NVIDIA's GPU Boost 3.0, but perhaps works a little bit different. Perhaps almost like a hybrid version of that and Ryzen. You know, XFR? I don't know. But it's going to be rather interesting to find out. As usual, you can do the speculation stuff, and I would encourage you to do so. Um, but, anyway, let's continue on with Intel. So there are a couple of Intel pieces of news. I want to get the first one out of the way. It's not, perhaps, going to be super interesting to a lot of you, but I do think it's a cool piece of news from Intel. And that is that they have made Thunderbolt royalty-free. The basic idea behind this is they're looking to increase adoption of the technology. Now, Thunderbolt is very flexible in terms of data delivery. And in theory, it has some incredible usage scenarios for Thunderbolt on the PC or other devices. So, for example, if you were to take Thunderbolt 2, you've got 20 gigabits per second. On the other hand, if you go to Thunderbolt 3, you've got 40 gigabits per second of transfer, and this means that you can also transmit video as well, and essentially it's incredibly versatile. It has a lot of bandwidth, and is almost the complete and, and utter dominant standard in Macs, obviously for devices which support it. And so the idea of increasing the usage and adoption of it to other devices is certainly a good thing, and I do have to admit I'm... You know, pretty. I'm pretty happy Intel are doing it. I'm not saying it's going to revolutionise gaming or revolutionise the way you're utilising your current PC, assuming it does become the standard. But it is still a very cool technology, and at the very least, increasing its market share can only be great for us as customers because we get access to other technology. Now, let's talk about the 7900X Skylake, shall we? Now, it's very important to know that this is an i9 processor. It is not i7, which it is being listed at. And this website, um, sorry, the website which originally spotted this is a Ukrainian one, uh, which is overclockers.ua. And it is going to, essentially the i9 range is going to act as the, the very top, you know, the, the crown jewel, if you want, of, of the HEDT market. Now, from what we can understand for this processor, it very much hits the specifications that we were expecting of the 7900X. We're looking at a CPU which runs at 4.3 gigahertz, sorry, 4.0 gigahertz, and actually boosts up to 4.5 gigahertz, which is very impressive when you consider it has 10 cores and 20 threads available to it. There's only, only going to be one processor which is slightly higher in terms of performance, and that is the 7920X, which is also based on the Skylake X architecture. Unfortunately, the 
base clocks and the boost clocks are unbeknownst to us. But all we do know is it does feature 12 cores, 24 threads, which is absolutely just bonkers when you think about the sheer level of performance that this can offer. I do question if the CPU is being detected 100% accurately because um, Sysoft is reporting the CPU is an i7, which is completely and utterly wrong. And the power draw is 175 watts, which could be a little over um, the top, to say the least. It's possible that it's more align, uh, sorry, in line with around 140 watts TDP. It's possible, however, that it's going to have, because it has higher clock speeds, and a large number of cores and all of that stuff. That's why we're seeing such a high number. But obviously, until we see an official announcement, then your guess is as good as mine. It's going to be very interesting to see how things play out with this compared to Ryzen. Obviously, with Threadripper, you're looking up to 16 cores, 32 threads. But you have that trade-off. You have much lower clock speeds. Obviously, there are going to be other factors involved, like overclocking and, um, you know basically usage scenarios so for example if you're running an application which perhaps wouldn't necessarily need 16 cores but if you're for example wanting an application which has support for maybe you know typically four to eight threads as a cores but uh, also higher clock speeds this would certainly be a bonus i imagine gaming this platform might be slightly faster obviously we're gonna have to wait and see and Perhaps, depending on what you're building this for, like if you're building a gaming slash HEDT traditional rig, so perhaps you're doing some video editing, maybe image editing, that type of stuff, but you gaming is just as important to you, perhaps Skylake X could be the CPU for you. On the other hand, if you're doing a lot of video editing or 3D rendering or virtual machine work, then maybe, uh, if that's perhaps more important to you, maybe Ryzen, uh, so, sorry, Ryzen Threadripper will be the CPU for you. We're going to be finalizing this video with NVMe 1.3. The specification has been published. And it's a good thing. It's a massive update. In fact, it's probably about the most significant update since, well, take a guess. That's right, 1.2. That was released back in 2014 for those who are interested in that type of thing. And it will obviously be implemented in all of the various technologies which require it. In other words, SSDs, motherboards, and HBAs. It's probably not going to happen until, well, very late this year. More realistically, we're going to see widespread adoption in 2018. So what's so good about it? Well, perhaps the biggest deal is a drive self-test feature. Very similar to Smart. This means that a host machine will be able to issue commands to drive to perform self-tests. And you won't need to mount a volume. And essentially, this means that if you're kind of iffy whether you know a drive can work or you know you're a bit concerned about things you don't need to expose a, a drive's contents to well you know the rest of the operating system and in theory this could also lead to data integrity tests and a lot of other cool stuff with it another cool thing is that you're going to have the ability to i guess sanitize data now this means that you can perform hardware level secure erases and this doesn't just wipe data from a flash drive, but also the control that memory buffer over provisionary, everything, it's just gone. So essentially, your data is almost going to be completely and utterly and totally unrecoverable, which obviously in certain usage scenarios, that could be kind of nice. Other details include, but not limited to, support for various boot partitions, uh, namespace, virtualization, telemetry, and also thermal management. That's really cool, and, you know, it's not, once again, probably going to set the world alight. I do believe that, that perhaps many people are going to be interested in the security side of things, you know, being able to complete and utterly nuke and erase data, once again, sanitizing it on the drive will definitely be very handy in certain markets. But, you know, if you're, once again, looking for a um, NVMe drive right now, then this specification is probably not something you're going to super be too bothered about unless once again these usage scenarios are uh, something which are going to be really pertaining to you the smart however or the smart like feature is certainly going to be kind of handy if you're trying to do bug fixing testing that type of stuff for the drive anyway with all of that said hopefully you have enjoyed the video normal stuff like share and subscribe i'll see you soon take care of yourselves bye for now